Aloha, my brethren, I'm back. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, uh, brothers, and all the single mothers that had to do a father's job, because I know you're out there too. And a big happy Father's Day to our Heavenly Father. I had to say it, I had to say it. Um, I just want to, before I get into this, because I didn't know what I was going to read, so I asked what I was going to read. And, uh, but I want to say this. I don't want to do a lot of yip yapping because it's kind of long. And I want to keep it on point. My last video that I put up, all your comments, absolutely are beautiful. Um, but you're also very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I got great joy. Um, and I saw someone, uh, a sister that subbed that I didn't know in a reply to a beautiful sister from the UK, Pauline. And uh, um, Jessica. Palomino, that's your, your YouTube name, thank you. Um, and also to Pauline and to Sean and to, and to, to Rhonda and uh, to everyone that's so kind. Um, I mean, it's on, on every video. Um, and sometimes YouTube doesn't let us comment, I know, I get the same thing. Uh, but uh, thank you. That uh, I saw some of them last night and I, I gave hearts and I was really touched and moved. Thank you. And all my imperfections. Anyways, I'm at a spot where I've t made a few videos and where I found the one video where I read a few weeks back and there was a groundhog over here, but I tried to zoom in on it. It's at the French school by my house, but the street's a little busy right now, but hopefully it's not too loud. It's a quiet spot. So it's, there's, there's a canoe here. I, I don't know. But that was a groundhog over there. It's a nice wooded area. I've got a, I've got a school. It's a French school with a daycare here. And uh, my house is over on the other side of this field, and then my daughter's house, my youngest daughter who's moving, um, is over there. Anyways, I don't want to yip yap too much here. I'm at two minutes. Because I guess what I'm going to read is a good message. I mean, it never gets old. It never gets old. It's very interesting considering what's been going on lately in Believer Land uh, with different brethren. Brethren. I gotta say it like in close you not quite sure, God knows, we don't know. Not just Mr. Pilkington or Mr. Hill or Mr. Green. There's been a lot of different stuff, okay? Um and then there's just those that are going with them, okay? Uh, uh, so you know, it's uh it's one of those things where this is interesting because I was kind of skimming through it. I'm reading by, from Rick Longva again because, you know what, I'm going to ask him, I'm going to message him and see if he's got these, for, if he's still printing these out, if anybody wants them, because, uh, like, this is years ago I got this. Uh, six years ago, Rob Walls sent to me through Rick Longva, who was out in British Columbia, and I'm going to message him because I don't know if he knows that I'm using them, and I'm, I know he wouldn't care. He's a beautiful, sweet brother, him and his wife, and she's a beautiful sister, and, um, uh, you know, I, I'm going to ask him if he's still, because if anyone wants these, that may be, because these are really great, like to read for yourself, there's tons, like there's 365 things, and there's like series in here, like within the days, it's great, so anyways, um, so I'm going to keep it to this, I just had to say that, get that out of the way, all right, so what I'm reading today, it's from June 27th, so it's pretty close, it's going into, uh, oh, June 24th, sorry, my bad, which is my, my second oldest daughter's birthday, Haley who's in Toronto, the one that has been struggling with uh, heavy duty addiction, but she's actually been sober off the fentanyl for four months now. So good for her. She's really happy. She, she's with somebody who's really not into that. And she's doing well too, so praise God. And she was the one that Martin and Kelly uh, sent a book to her in jail, First Duty in Heaven, and she read it. It was back in 2018, and she believed. She came to basically, she goes, I'm basically a believer of mom, but she came to believe. Well, because she was doing four, time, four months in jail and uh, sober, and she read First Duty in Heaven. God bless them for doing that. That was... Anyways, and it's still in that. She left it there. So I was floating around the Vanier Women's Jail Correctional Center in Milton, Ontario, Canada. So, praise God. We, we, we could have some uh, believer and sisters out there somewhere, right? That we just don't know about. Um, anyways. Uh, so this is We Who Detain. It's uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 to 12, and it's part 1. Many have speculated on who is the one who detains. Some versions say restrains. In 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. For the secret of lawlessness is already operating. Only when the present detainer, 
may be coming to be out of the midst. Then will be unveiled the lawless one, whom the Lord Jesus will dispatch with the spirit of his mouth and will discard by the advent of his presence, whose presence is in accord with the operation of Satan, with all power and signs and false miracles, and with every seduction of injustice among those who are perishing because they do not receive the love of the truth for their salvation. And therefore God will be sending them an operation of deception for them to believe the falsehood that all may be judged who do not believe the truth but delight in injustice. Many believe the detainer is Holy Spirit, that there will be a removal of the Holy Spirit from the earth and that the male of lawlessness will then be revealed. Others say this is Satan who is cast out of heaven and then all hell breaks loose on earth when Satan rules through this lawless human, through signs and false miracles and every seduction of injustice, leading the world's population to him and the world's religions into apostasy. The first, the removal of the Holy Spirit, cannot be possible. And he makes a really good point, so hear me out, okay? Cannot be possible because the Holy Spirit will still be in operation during that time of peril. Israel. Remember, Israel's on pause right now. The second, Satan cast out, cannot be the one who detains because he, still, he will be the one who brings this time of lawlessness in the guise of truth to those here. So my husband and I have entertained the idea, or so my husband, that Satan may have been the one detaining, but it can't be. We're always learning and growing. The ones, who, now this may be no brainer some of you, but I'm just gonna keep going, okay? The ones who detain are the believers, us, the body of Christ. It is the removal of that body of believers that opens a way for full-scale apostasy. At present, our presence, even though it may be only a shadow presence, a remnant, of those who believe Jesus really died, was entombed, and rose from the dead three days later, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, that are keep, what keeps the lawless one from being fully manifested. Now, I, we do, most of us, all of us do agree with this, so maybe don't. In order to be apostate, you once had to believe the truth. Apostates are not unbelievers. They are believers who alter the truth of God for a lie. Romans 1, 21, 25 tells us that because knowing God, not as God, do they glorify or thank him. But vain are they made in their reasonings and darkened in their unintelligent heart. Those who alter the truth of God into the lie and are venerated and offer divine service to the creature rather than the creator who is blessed for the eons, amen. To alter means change or cause, to change in character or composition, typically in a comparatively small but significant way. It does not take much to be in apostasy. One has to, just has to believe the lies that are wrapped in a little truth. Paul would have been considered an apostate before he met the risen Lord on the road to Damascus. He believed in God, followed the law, believed in the coming Messiah and was as devout as any human could be. But he believed lies, lies that brought him in favor with men, but not with God. Paul was popular when he was Saul. I'm saying adding in the Saul. What he believed was popular. Paul was devout and Paul would have been considered righteous above toward all men, but Paul was apostate. This is what lawlessness produces, a teaching outside of God and his word and adding to the truth already written and replacing what is written for what is popular at the moment. Although this has been going on for thousands of years, the detainers are the only ones holding back and not by their own strength. The fullness of the apostasy, once they are removed then and only then will lawlessness prevail for a season. Now before I go into part two, I've got to say this, and there's brother, brethren that I do believe also is this too. There could be a twofold, and I've talked to my husband about this. The word apostate means departure. Some of us are of the persuasion that that apostasy must come first, the departure, that could be, it could be a twofold thing here, okay? Like, bear with me. And some of you may know that. And it, by all means, in comments, give me a like too, please, will you? Give me a like. If you haven't subscribed and you like what you see, then that was well. But a like always helps with the algorithms. This might reach some Christians out there, okay? Um, the reality is this, like 
there may be a twofold word of that word apostasy because it does mean departure as like a physical remover departure and it also could mean this what rick long was saying okay there's always more to the scriptures there's always layers and twofold sometimes it's multi-layered what something means depends anyways i'm going to continue on okay so i've finished that one oh no it does not okay yes okay so i read about paul okay so i'm gonna to go to part two here we who detain god in deception second thessalonians 2 i don't believe that those who are deceived know they're deceived no i don't think so either otherwise you wouldn't be deceived uh, only those who have been enlightened know they were once deceived and the first thing they try to do is tell others of the deception they are now in but most do not realize that those in deception are not there by their own doing they did not choose to be deceived Paul writes of this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and wherefore God will be sending them an operation of deception for them to believe the falsehood. 2 verse 11, chapter 2 verse 11. God does not send them, just send them this falsehood. He sends a deceiver. This falsehood has been nurtured along by the people who teach it and those who believe it. Verse 10 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that because they do not receive a love of the truth for their salvation. These are not people who deny the existence of God or Christ Jesus. These are people who deny the truth concerning them and believe the traditions of humans concerning them. These are those who are in apostasy and same one Paul speaks of in verses 2, 3, 7 of chapter 2. That you be not quickly shaken from your mind nor yet be alarmed either through spirit or through word or through an epistle as through us as that day of the Lord is present. No one should be deluding you by any method for should not the apostasy be coming first and the man of lawlessness be unveiled, the son of destruction, for the secret of lawlessness is already operating. Apostasy does not have any appearance of evil. It has, as Paul tells us above, the form of an epistle, hmm. a form of the spirit or the word. As it is, as it, as it is, if it is, that was a tongue twister, as if it is from the very mind of God, it appeals. If anything, it has more of an appeal to the soul of humans than the truth has to their spirit. This is why it is so deceptive. And this is what God has sent them, will send them, falsehood that will appeal to the soul. Something their eyes can believe and their hands can touch, their emotions can soar with, yet it will quench their spirit. Many will ask, why will God do this? Because God will have no falsehood in his presence. As was said by Paul, because they do not receive the love of the truth for their salvation. Truth is the one thing they ignored. And ignoring it means they never sought it out. They held on to tradition, tradition that had no scriptural backing. That is what apostasy is. In Revelation we read when God will rid the world of apostasy and what he uses to eliminate it. We read here where he causes the wild beast and the ten horns, political powers, to turn on the prostitute, apostate religion. And the ten horns which he perceived in the wild beast, these will be hating the prostitute, and they will be making her desolate and naked, and they will be eating her flesh, and they will be burning her up with fire. For God imparts to their hearts to form his opinion, and to form one opinion, and to give their kingdom to the wild beast, until the words of God shall be accomplished. Revelation 17, verse 16 to 17. Sorry, I got one of my own hairs in my mouth. <laughs> I don't, my long hair, I don't want to choke on that. <laughs> so we can see that it is God who is the one responsible for bringing a deception to those who are deceived, 2 Thessalonians 2.11. And he will be the one who eliminates the deception, Revelation 17.16. This is all part of God's process, a process that has been obscured and disbelieved by the masses. Yet it will, has been revealed to Paul, as well as John, and to those who are seeking the truths from the scriptures, will he reveal his process. Tomorrow we'll look into a messer of light, who is also being used to deceive. Now, where am I at? I'm at 14 minutes. Okay, I'm going to keep going, people. That's why I didn't want to yip yap too much. Part three. We're in tomorrow. It's still today. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. Job chapter 12, 16. The concordant literal Old Testament puts it this way. Both the erring one and the one causing error are his. That all things are in God, are of God, is an infallible truth. One that has 
is not readily believed by the majority of Christians. So when they read verses like the above, as well as, and therefore God will be sending them an operation of deception for them to believe the falsehood, 2 Thessalonians 2, they can't seem to bring themselves to the truth that is all of God. They want to blame humans, demons, or Satan for the deception. And in the rea relative, they are correct. But it is God who is behind all things, orchestrating everything according to His will. Once this is realized, there's no one to blame. I know it's hard to understand, but I know you all know that understand the absolute and relative perspectives. What a magnificent gift to understand. Wow, thank you. Thank you, Father. That's why, happy Father's Day. <laughs> thank you, Father. Um, in Amos, we read this of God's doing all. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? Amos chapter 3, verse 6. It's all through the scriptures. Nothing moves, happens, starts, or finishes without the one who moves all things, starts, all, starts and stops all things. He is controlling all. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Now that Christ Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, the Father is operating after the counsel of his own will, everything after the counsel of his will, and he's given all power and authority to his Son. And Jesus says, I, I have be, I, I'm becoming the Alpha and the Omega. It's all things right now, because we know that Jesus hands everything over to his Father. At the consummation. At the end of the eons. I'm adding that in. But, this case someone wasn't aware of that, and I could prove scriptural stuff. Put it in the comments and I'll answer you. Paul tells us 2 Corinthians 11, 13, 15, for, for such are false apostles, fraudulent workers being transfigured into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is being transfigured into a messenger of light. It is no great thing then if his servants also are being transfigured or dispense, as dispensers of righteousness, whose consummation shall be in accord with their acts. Evil is not some dark, insidious, horrific lie that is easy to see. It is hidden in the tr light of truth, so hidden that it is mistaken for truth. The one reason most do not see truth is because truth is too bright for many to see. There are no shadows when it comes to truth. But with evil, there is always a shadow of truth covering it. That is what makes it so easy to believe. Satan moves with the times. Now he can be seen as an angel of light, and those whom he has deceived are now messengers who take a stand for righteousness. Only the righteousness is self-righteousness and free will. The sovereignty of God has no place. Yet it is spoken of as being premier of all truths in one breath and denied when verses like above, like the above are said to be of him. Ain't that truth. <laughs> Oh, my legs fall asleep. Sorry. No, no, really. I have pins and needles. Oh, 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 sorry, guys. I'm making a video. Sorry. Hi there. Fellas walking by with what's that lady talking to herself? No, I'm talking to a camera. My leg is falling asleep, people. Oh, boy. Anyway. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I lost my, I lost my spot. Where the heck was I spot? Uh, okay. I, I know where I'm at now. I don't know how much he listened. He heard. He's gone now. He was over. He came over from behind nowhere. Good. Maybe he got some truth. <laughs> Anyways, he's probably going us probably some Christian making and talking about God. I. Anybody watching for the for me the first time? I ain't no Christian, and I ain't religious. Oh no no no. Go read my, about me on the bidding of my channel, please. Please, go to my channel and read. <laughs> yeah. That's what religion has done destroyed the name of Jesus Christ and God the Father. Make them think they're all religious. Anyways, keep an eye on my time here. Okay. Oh, I'm in 19 minutes. Okay, I gotta hurry up here. Every evil is under God's control. He controls it so as to go no further than what he intends it to accomplish. Both the deceived and the deceiver are his, the false messengers of light and the, de the deceiver, and those who believe them, the deceived. Jeremiah asks, who is this who speaks and it comes out, comes about, if Yahweh does not determine it? Do not both evil and the good come forth from the mouth of the supreme? Lamentations, chapter 3, 37, 38. Wow. Yes, they do. It, it, he is God and in control of all. 
Even the deceived and the deceiver are in his hands. Romans chapter 9, verse 21. And this is the last part. And it's not too long, so thank you. No one should be deluding you by any method. The believer has no, really no need of worrying to be deluded. Impose a misleading belief upon someone. Deceive, fool. Although they may for a time believe something that is not the truth concerning God and his son. They will eventually be attuned to the truth in time. That is, how, that is how God operates with believers. Paul tells us this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. Yet faithful is the Lord who is, will be establishing you and guarding you from the wicked one. All through our walk in the Lord, he is establishing, setting permanent truth in us, which in our daily walk is able to guide us through the maze of false teachings that permeate the Christian world. We have no fear of the world at large, only in the realm of religion. That there is that is where the dangers of false teachings lie. We can find nothing in the world's philosophies, as we, as we are said to be sojourners here. For here, we are not having a permanent city, but we are seeking for the one which is impending, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. Paul tells us this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the era will be when they will not tolerate sound teaching, but their hearing being tickled, they will heap up for themselves teachers in accord with their own desires. And indeed, they will be turning their hearing away from the truth, yet will be turned aside to myths. This all happens from within the church system, not from without. John also warns us of those who will bring delusion. In his first epistle, he says, Little children, it is the last hour. And according as you hear that the Antichrist is coming, now also there have come to be many Antichrists. Whence we know that it is, that is the last hour. Out of us they come, but they were not of us. For if they were of us, they would have remained with us. But it was that they may be manifested that they were not all of us. And you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you're all aware. First John chapter 2, 18. Now, that can be for Israelites, but it can be for transadministrational. They have an anointing, the Israelites, but we have Christ's Spirit dwelling in us. We're also anointed, but... I'm adding that in. John, as does Paul, tells us the believers, we need not worry about being deluded because the Lord is faithful. He will be guarding us, whereas believers, we have the anointing of the Holy One, as I just said. And we are all being made aware of these false teachings that have already come upon the church system. The last hour of the truth has passed. We are now in the error, era of error. When the detainers are removed, then the apostasy will be will cover the world. You know, if I had more time, I could read the next one. It's called Test, but I'm that's for the next video because uh, you know what? It's a little long, and I'm, you know, testing testing the spirits, but testing this thing, which things be true, and that's why at the beginning of this. I was talking about this different, and that's not to put anybody down. That's my my heart is not, and I pray that where there's error in people's teachings, that uh, it be corrected in them. I I, I believe Mr. Pilkenting is a, a a a brother. I mean, it's all about the, the evangel, the three parts of the evangel. Jesus Christ died for sin, was literally dead, literally dead, ceased to exist, his soul dead was entombed and roused on the third day by the power of the Holy Spirit. Sin left in the grave. It was accomplished. It was finished. That is a simple evangel. A belief. Understanding what death is and what Christ did. And the power of his resurrection for all of us. Not just believers. Right? Because he's the savior of all mankind. Especially believers, but not exclusively. Anyways, I, I'm going to wrap this up. You have a wonderful day. It's beautiful out today here in Ontario, Kanakistan. But it's important that we know, I, I've got to say this too, all right, that what I was talking about is I didn't, like I said, I didn't want to put people down. I, by no means, that's not what my heart is at all. And I pray that anyone who is erroring, and including and, and me also, always being watchful, because I'm not, you know, but the Lord guides us. So that's a comfort too, to know. So we pray that those brethren that are kind of kind of are often these weird little things may come back 
into a straight path. You know, saying the snatching away is not for like, the area is limitless and those who don't believe the snatching away, I mean, that's our expectation. That's not part of, that's not actually the evangel, but that is our expectation. And some of us, there won't be many of us. Most will be in repose, but we know we'll be resurrected. This being all said, I think that's what I wanted to say. I just wanted to make sure that people didn't think I was putting anyone down. Uh, I think that my phone is having enough of this nonsense because it's starting to go like that again. Um, I love you all. I greet you all with a holy kiss, and I thank you so much for watching. Thank you. It's an important message. The days are evil, and we're almost out of here. Grace and peace.